I wanted to find out just how big the Compassionate Release Program is in our country and what changes could be in store down the road. I talked to Christy Thompson. She's a reporter for the Marshall Project who initially wrote about this program and its future. What is covered by this program? What exemptions might exist? Compassionate release, um, the actual statute is pretty broad, and the Bureau of Prisons has developed these different policies that outline who they're going to consider for the program. So there's a few groups of people. One is people who are very elderly, regardless of their health situation. If they're very old, they've served enough of their sentence, they can apply to get out through compassionate release. Mm -hmm. The other are cases like Kevin Zeke, people with terminal illness, who doctors find they have 18 months or less to live. They can apply to get out so they can die at home with their families. Um, and another group of people that are almost never approved, I couldn't find a single instance of it ever being approved, are cases of caregivers. So if something happens on the outside, let's say, you know, your husband, the father of your two kids dies and you're in prison on a low level drug charge, you can apply to get out early so you can take care of those kids and not have them end up in the foster care system. The actual frequency of this program being employed is not that great. You found. It's not just super violent criminals that are getting denied for this program. We did a FOIA for all of the data of all compassionate release requests from 2013 to 2017, found that the Bureau had received around 5,400 applications, and of those, 6%, so right around 300 people, had been approved so far. And what's really interesting is in that same time, 266 people who requested compassionate release still died within federal custody, many of whom never even had a final answer on whether they were approved or denied. Have there been instances of people getting out and then recommitting that crime or another one that have dinged this policy's chances of being more widespread? The research shows us that people really age out of criminal activity. The older you are, your likelihood to recidivate after you get out of prison just drops significantly. And the people that are being considered for these programs, like we did detail in the piece, are some of the oldest, frailest, sickest people in the system. So statistically, it's very unlikely that they're gonna go on to commit a new crime. I wonder where this is going in the future. Uh, will it continue as is? Do you think it will expand? Has there been any feedback on your story? Well, I want to say a couple things on that. One, uh, the when compassionate release, the statute was written by Congress. The idea was is there should be some kind of safety valve, is the term they use, to let people out early when it's no longer equitable to keep them in prison. So the idea was, what is the purpose of keeping someone in prison when they're basically on a deathbed on a respirator, 87 years old. Like, what is the purpose of prison in that circumstance? And the other thing is that a lot of these people we're talking about, they weren't sentenced to life in prison. They weren't sentenced to die in prison. And when something comes up and changes that significantly, that's where this program can be brought in. Um, you know, and it's not just the human issue. The reason why so many members of Congress and both parties are talking about this is because it's extremely expensive to keep these people in prison and to pay for their health care. And the spending on health care in the Federal Bureau of Prisons has skyrocketed. So people are thinking of this not just in humanitarian means, but looking for ways to save money um, and really focus prison resources on people that actually pose a threat to the community. If you Google the Marshall Project and Compassionate Release, I'd encourage you to read her full article.